What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for Ready to Love. This is season 4, the reunion part 2, you guys. Um So you guys, I think I'm going to review the new season of which I don't know anything about this show, so you guys are going to have to educate me as we go along. I think I'm going to review Married at First Sight, Houston, and I don't and I'm going to have to think about Ready to Love when it comes back in the fall. We'll think about that if I want to review Ready to Love. Speak. We're gonna talk. We're gonna get into Ready. We're gonna talk about Ready to Love because I got some things to talk about, and it might be at the. It's, it's gonna be at the beginning of it. Um. But yeah, you guys. So if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you guys are not already subscribed to my channel, what are we doing, you guys? Why are we still going on this date? Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell button. And um, with without further ado, let's go ahead and get into Ready to Love. All right. All right. All right, you guys, so this episode, we pick up where we left off last week. You guys remember, Nephew Tommy asked Kyra, you know, where do things lay with her and AJ currently? You know, you know, the, what is what is her choice? So Kyra says that, you know, a, she and AJ, they are friends. And if AJ wants to pursue something with her, he knows what to do. I'm like, girl, you are playing a big ass fucking game. And at this point, you are really annoying my spirit. Speaking of Kyra, let's talk about Miss Kyra. So, have you guys watched the trailer for um, Love and Marriage Huntsville, which premieres next Saturday on OWN? I will be reviewing it, and you guys will probably get that next Sunday, like you guys always do with Ready to, I mean, um, Love, Love and Marriage Huntsville. You guys know that those videos, I do those on Sunday. Damn! Jesus Christ! I just thought about it. Oh, we got a busy schedule. We got a busy, busy schedule next Sunday because Raising Canaan, I'm going, I think I'm, I'm going to watch the first episode of Raising Canaan and see if I like it. We might review it. Raising Canaan premieres next Sunday. We got The Shy next Sunday. We got Married to Medicine next Sunday. We have um, Real Housewives of Potomac next Sunday. I'm still doing Baddies ATL. God help me with that show. But damn, I got a busy, I got five shows to review next Sunday. So probably what I think I'm going to do is, um, I think what I'm going to do, oh God, I got to figure that out. But back to this, back to Kyra. So you guys, like I said, have you guys saw the trailer for um, Love and Marriage Huntsville? Well, Miss Kyra is going to make a little bit of an appearance on um, Love and Marriage Huntsville on the arms of Ma Maso. Maso. God, Tisha. You know what? That trailer. I might. I, I may should do an individual video for that trailer because Mel got me fucked up. I've been riding hard for Mel. I have been riding hard for Mel and Mel, girl, you wrong as two left shoes. We gonna. Uh, you know what? We're not even gonna talk about it. Mm 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 mm. mm. And I like y'all know I love me some Mel. But Mel was wrong. Let's move on. All right, you guys. So after we talked about Kyra, we move over to the creep known as Troy, right? So Tommy asked um, creepy as Troy, how many women did he offer trips to? Well, you know, to my knowledge, it was only two women. So Tommy says, okay, by show of hands to the ladies here, how many of you did um, Troy offer a trip to? So you just see hands start raising. He says, okay, so one, two, um, three. Okay, you, you so you offered a trip to three ladies. Okay. All right. Also, by a show of hands, how many of the ladies here did he kiss? You didn't see some hands go up. Oh, it's one, it's two, it's three, and it's four women that he kissed. I'm like, so then Tommy asked him, like, so why did you do all of that? And his response was he was trying to make a connection in such a short time. I'm like, huh? I mean, I, I get I get trying to make a connection in such a, such, such a short time. I do get that since this is a reality show and you guys don't have a lot. It's like it's kind of like a speed dating thing. I get that. But even when you go speed dating and stuff like that, you're not going to kiss everybody that you come in contact with. You may, you know, give them, you know, you may give them a hug. You know, you may, you may shake their hand or if they're comfortable with it, you may hug them. Ooh, excuse me, I don't mean to burp your face, but you're not gonna kiss everybody. And then Amber said the same thing that I was thinking, like, if, like, why did you say it's your signature move? It's not a signature move. Just say that you know when you meet people, you you greet, you just are greeting them. And and I think 
that would have come out better, but it was just the fact that you... And it, if you just... Oh, shit, it's been my lip, my cheek. If it was just a cheek... If it was a cheek kiss, you know, like how people do when they meet each... You know how when you see your friends, be like, oh, hey, boo. If you did that, that would be a different thing, but you literally physically kissed these women on the cheek. But, you know, um, he says that that's not who he is. I'm like, okay, if it's not who you are, whatever. Don't care. So then we talk about Andrea, right? I don't know why we talked about Andrea. I, we talked about her and his damn cat. I was like, huh? Why are we discussing Andrea and her damn cat? I don't care about her or the cat. Not, like, not in that, in that, in that I don't mean I don't care about her. I really don't care about that gang, the damn cat. So, the men that she, I guess, you know, the men that she was interested in, they didn't know about her cat, because they showed us never before seen footage, and I'm like, why did we need to see this? But okay, so Tommy asked her if she learned anything from this experience. She says, I did learn something. She says, I learned that, you know, she might not be as assertive as, you know, she she could be or she should be. And my thing is, like I said, this is this is a fast-paced dating experience, so... This is not like true to real life. Because in real life. In real life. When you're dating someone. It's not going to be as fast. I, that's really what I want to say. I mean. I, maybe she she did learn that she could be a little bit. She's not. She could be a little bit more assertive. But this is a. This is a fast paced dating reality show. So. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think and feel. Let me because, I mean, I guess I can see it and I, I get it. But, again, like I said, this is just a fast-paced reality dating show. Do you want to be assertive? I mean, do you want to be seen as assertive? I don't I don't know. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, we move over to Jason and Kyra, right? So, Jason is talking about Kyra. He says that, you know, with him and Kyra, as time went on and Kyra didn't have her mind made up, I think that's where things started to change with them. And he said that, you know, she kept telling him that she needed to go through the entire process. And I'm like, I get, I got, and I got where Jason was coming from. I got where Jason was coming from because by the time, because she kept saying she needs to go through the entire process. I do understand what, she, I do get what she was saying. But at the same time, I get where Jason is coming from. At that point, we are dead. Like we are at the, we're at the end of the process. What more do you need? Like it's, and, and I got I, I, I got Jason it's like what more do you need at this point like I'm showing you every I'm showing you my all I'm giving everything to you and you keep telling me I need to tr I need to go through this process no what Kyra was doing was trying to make it to the end of the show that's what Kyra was doing um I mean I can see some parallels between Kyra and Jason I can definitely see some parallels between them, you know, because Jason was technically doing the same thing, but it got to a point where Jason actually made up his mind that he wanted Liz. So then Kyra says that, you know, with she and Jason, you know, saying she says, honestly, her honesty and her vulnerability was not was not a safe space. And she felt a shift between them after the four guys said that they would pick her. And I was like, okay, I guess I can see that. I can see the shift. Actually, I kind of can see the shift because she, I, I do see it. Because it was after that point that Jason kind of started to. Actually, I, I actually really do see that because I do see it. Because it was after that that Jason started to say he he would choose Liz. He, he said in that in deliberation that he would pick Kyra, but then the other men picked Kyra as well. Huh. I guess I can kind of see that. But then I also have an issue with Jason just because of his, when his friends met Liz. And I think that's for me where I keep always go back to is when Jason and his friends met Liz and they could feel the religion, the church coming off of her. We're going to talk about Liz in a little bit as well. But, you know, they... De um, Jason and Kyra argued with each other and they actually went in circles and Tom even told them y'all are going in circles so it went nowhere right so then we move over to David and you know him wanting the passwords right um so David says he wants to get married again he says you know he doesn't need the passwords 
I'm like, well, that's not what you said on the show. And you know, um, I, you know, well, it could be a, a a game of editing. Who knows? Don't you know? He says he doesn't need the password. He just needs your heart. So then Tommy asked the ladies, like, you know, would you guys, would you ladies be comfortable with giving your significant other your password? And they were like, you know, define that. Is it my a boyfriend or is it my husband? He says, okay. It, and since we're talking, since we were talking about marriage, and if you're in a relationship, if you're married to someone, how would you feel? So most of them raise their hands. I had to think about it myself. I'm like, you know, if I'm married to someone, if we're if I'm married, and you know, would I give up my password though? I, 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 that's a hard one for me. Would I give up my pass? If we're if we're dating, absolutely not. You're not getting my password. If we're married, sure, why not? I don't have anything to hide, and you can give me yours. But the thing for me is, I'm not gonna go snoop. The thing for me is. I think most people, when they ask for the password, they ask for your password because they want to go through your text messages. They want to go through your DMs and stuff like that. I think that's where most people come from when they want your passwords. They want to be able to go through it if they if they want to. Me personally, if I have to go through your stuff to see if you're cheating on me, that means we don't need to be together. I'm not gonna go look for something because if like the like the saying goes, if you look for some, if you go looking for something, you're gonna find it. And me personally, like I said, I don't, I, I don't, I don't need your password. You can give it to me if you want to. I don't need that shit. I'm not gonna ever go through your stuff because if I trust you, then I trust you, and I don't, I don't. There's nothing that'll, you know, um, sway that trust unless you do something, unless I see something. And when I say if I see something, if I'm out, if you, if I see you out with someone else that ain't me, that's when we got a problem. But or if you change up on me. If you if you if I see you out or if you change up on me, I'm gonna ask you like, what's going on? Is everything okay? Are we good? And if you say we good, I'm like, okay, cool, we good. If we say we're not good, then what we, what do we need to do? To, what do we need to do to fix it? But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next up, we move over to Bernicia and Joel, right? So Bernicia and Joel they're sitting on the couches, right? Joel is actually Bernicia's right here where I am, right? And Joel is in my passenger seat. That's how far apart they are. Actually, they were further apart. Actually, no, yeah, because my, you know, my steer, my right here. So yeah, that's how far away they were. And Tommy picked up on that. So Tommy asked him like, "What's going on?" So Bernicia says that two weeks after filming, he changed up on her. Somebody left that in my comment section weeks ago that they did not trust Joel. I'm gonna go find that comment. But somebody left it in my comment section weeks ago that they did not trust Joel. So she says that, you know, what we saw on television and what she got, what she got from Joel after filming, completely opposite, right? Actually, her she says, what we see and how they were filming, she didn't get that. Her words, I'm like, damn. So <clears throat> it made me think, so like, was Joel putting on a front? Was Joel putting on the whole facade this whole entire time? Like was he was he tricking people? But you guys know I have my I, you guys know that I have my side eye for jo, for Joel after he said that he would pick Kyra. You guys know I have my side eye for him. That it's gonna rain today. I gotta get out of here before it starts to rain. I gotta use the bathroom too, and I don't use public restrooms. Um. So. She said that, you know, <clears throat> she says that Joel slowed down, trying to make it as if it was on her. And I figured that that would happen because you guys remember, actually, in that final episode when she met his family, they were like, you know, I think she's just a little bit too into you. Is that a bad thing? Like, when you want somebody to be into you? And I figured it out. I think what they, and she said it in this in, in, in reunion, that she's not going to chase after a man. And I'm like, that's what it is. Joel wants you to chase at, he wants you to chase after him he wants you to do that and if you know because he felt like she was you know he feels like she was just going too fast I'm like oh so you want her to slow you want her to basically just chase after you be like oh Joel this Joel no I'm not with that and I really wasn't with the fact that how they tried to make her out as if she was jealous or possessive that really irritated me and annoyed me and pissed me off was the fact that them, him, it was him and it was Amber. 
I wanted Amber to sit back and shut the hell up. So his mother-in-law passed away, right? And Amber sent him a text message or something like that. I really wouldn't listen to it because it was Amber and Amber actually got on my nerves. Amber was in this reunion. Amber, Amber and that ugly ass out, the ugly ass dress she had on, got on my nerves. But I just didn't appreciate them trying to make Vernicia out to be like this jealous, possessive woman. I didn't appreciate that. I did not appreciate that whatsoever. Because Vernicia, like you know, you made that test message seem like it was something completely different than what it was. Vernicia, Vernicia, I'm happy you got away from him. Um. So then Joel, Vernicia also says that, you know, Joel was hanging out with Chrysanthemum and with Stacy, And they asked him about his girlfriend. And he said he didn't have a girlfriend, right? He played like he was single. Now, Ver, um, Joel says he never he never went out with um, Stacy or Chrysanthemum. He says that he was at a watch party with them. And he said that they did ask him about his girlfriend. But he said that we're taking things slow. Now, my thing is. It's a, it was a, like a communication and the communication was on Joel. Like, I feel like the communication was on him. Bernice, you deserve better than Joel. Honestly, you do. Honestly, you do. And then Stacy chimed in. Oh, God. I, I was, irri- like I said, I was irritated and I was hella annoyed. So I'm just going to move on because I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on and wrap up the episode. All right, you guys. So, I have a side eye. I have a side eye right about now for um, Liz. I still like Liz. I do. But it was something that I picked up on in the episode when um, David met her ex-boyfriend. It was definitely a vibe that I picked up on. And we'll talk about it in just a minute, right? So Tommy is talking to David about, you know, not him not letting Liz talk when they met up, right? And David was trying to make excuse after excuse, right? Um, so, you know, he says that, you know, um, he says that Liz told him that, uh, this is a previous conversation, that Liz told him, God damn, how did it get that fucking dark? Jesus Christ. There we go. So, um, David said that Liz told him that you know she had a she has a man in her life he would he would he would get close to her and then he would leave i'm like is that her ex boyfriend clarence but then i heard that clarence is married right and like i said so this is what i'm just talking about so in that episode where you know he met her ex boyfriend i saw something there i'm like there's something there between those two and it just i saw something there between those two it's still something there now, i know he's married but still see something between them um so then you know we talk about the fact that liz said that david asked her in front of his friends about her kissing jason right david says she's lying right liz says he's lying i don't know who's lying don't really care to be quite honest with you guys be honest so david says that you know the reason that he was on 10 at that last minute is because she called him because i guess word had got around that he she wasn't his number one or whatever i don't know it really sounded immature as hell to be quite honest with you and then tom was like you know if anybody's gonna self-eliminate it gotta come through me i'm like okay but in any end of it david and liz they both you know david apologizes to liz and she accepts his apology now liz and jason right oh what the fuck Oh my god. Now this phone just went dark and I don't know why and I can't see. All right, so Liz says that when it comes to she and Jason that honesty is what is what makes things work, right? And she says that, you know, their communication is good, right? And then Jason says that about her, she positioned herself to be pursued. Um, so they do say that they're both intimate with each other, but if not in a sexual sense, I'm like, okay, that's cool. And they both met each other's parents. I was like, okay, cool. 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 Cool
cool, cool, cool. But yeah, you guys, that's it um, for this season of Ready to Love. Um, so of the couples, the only two that are still together is Liz and Jason and Amber and um Chris. And now we're going to go to DC. Child, when um when uh what's his name said. So can I come to DC? So you're gonna bring me to DC, Troy? Hell no, we're not gonna bring you to DC. We're gonna get a restraining order against you. But that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the um, season, the episode, the re- everything. And we'll discuss it in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share the video. And until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask or not, whichever one you guys do. Be safe and be blessed as always. And until the next one, you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.